In this demonstration, you're looking at my iPad screen, and we're going to click on Workshop 1 Demonstration. After watching this video, then you can follow along and do the same thing yourself, because then you're going to actually see the experience the way your students see it. So I'm tapping on the Workshop 1 Demonstration, and we're going to take a look at Notability first. So Notability is an app that you've seen before in a previous webinar, and and you've taken a look at how you can open PDF documents, how your students can open PDF documents, and then actually annotate them. They can add text, they can draw, they can actually record their voice, they can add pictures and, and video. They can have an experience by annotating work, let's say they were in a, a science experiment. I keep going back to science. Now a student is watching a chemical reaction take place and they're actually taking a video of that chemical reaction and adding that video onto their lab sheet. And that's pretty amazing. So we're going to start out by opening up just a sample PDF document. And we're looking at the rock and mineral scavenger hunt. So I'm going to be tapping rock and mineral scavenger hunt. And it opened this up. I'm in the Safari browser right now looks a little different if you're in Chrome browser. When I tap the screen anywhere, it, you notice it says open in in the upper right hand corner. In Chrome it's going to say open in in the lower right hand corner. But right now I'm not in Notability yet. My PDF document is opened up but not in Notability. So I'm going to tap the screen. I'm going to tap open in and I'm going to choose Notability and I'm going to tap that. So now the Notability app has opened up and I'm going to tap Create New Note and I'm going to tap OK. And now my PDF document, my Rock and Mineral Scavenger Hunt sheet, has opened up in Notability. I know I'm in Notability because I can see all the Notability tools on the top. So with this, if I tap on the pencil, I can write. If I tap on the eraser and just swipe across what I wrote, it'll just take it away. In this particular activity, I'm going to want to answer some questions and add my answers to specific places on the sheet. So I'm going to tap on the text tool and then I'm going to tap and hold on the screen until the word text box comes up. I'm going to tap text box and the text box appears. I know the answer to the first question is pumice, so I'm going to type that in. I know that because I wrote the question. So now if I tap and hold on that, I can move that text box where I want it. So now I have answered the question and I've put the word under question one. I, an igneous rock full of holes is pumice. If I scroll down near the bottom of the sheet, I can answer any of these questions the same way. In the old days, though, when I got to this part, when my students got here, they would have to write a description of pumice, the sample that they saw in the lab. But they don't have to do that anymore. Now they can tap on the plus, and they can tap on photo, and they can actually, or rather, take a photo, and they can take a picture of that sample of pumice. I've already done that, and my picture is in my camera roll, so I'm going to tap on photo and find that picture in my camera roll of pumice. And I've got maybe too many pictures in here, so it'll take a while. There it is. So I tapped on pumice, and now I can add a caption. By tapping on add a caption, I can type in pumice. Now I've labeled tap on the screen and that's a pretty big picture so I'm gonna tap on the picture so I can drag that blue dot and make it a smaller size and then I'm going to grab the picture and move it where I want it maybe next to pumice so now and I, I maybe the word pumice doesn't need to be in here on this particular one so I can edit my picture And now I can do some things like cropping and do some minor editing on my picture. 
So here we have the ability for students to have a visual representation from their lab experience on their lab sheet. Now when it comes time to save this, we're just going to tap on this image up here in the upper left corner, the box with the arrow. As I tap on that, now I can tap on Google Drive and I can select the folder that I've shared with my teacher as a student in my Google Drive, in the student's Google Drive, and then I simply send, send to Google Drive and this will save this annotated version of this document in a shared folder with my teacher. My teacher can then open up that shared folder and see my work. That's the power of notability and the key in notability for students is for you as a teacher to get that document to them in a PDF format. If you're in Blackboard, you're simply going to want to, perhaps you created this in Microsoft Word, you're going to save as PDF and you're going to add that PDF document to Blackboard. Later on in the tutorial section, it's going to show you how to add that PDF document to Blackboard so that it will open up smooth, smoothly for students. And now I'm going to tap the home button on my iPad and I'm going to want to go back. I'm, I have Safari opened up or I have Blackboard and Safari so I'm going to tap Safari and this way I can tap on my screen and I'm just simply going to close out the Rock and Mineral Scavenger Hunt by tapping the little X up here in the corner. Now I'm back to my Blackboard. If you want to see more on Notability, there is a video that you can watch here in Blackboard. But before we do that, before we move on, let's take a look at a completed document of the Rock and Mineral Scavenger Hunt. So I put this in the Blackboard course, tap on Rock and Mineral Scavenger Hunt Completed, I'll do that now, and you'll get an idea of what your teacher might be able to, or what you might be able to see from your students. So I scroll down, my students have answered all the questions, and now this student has taken photographs of every rock sample in that lab and have placed them in this PDF document and saved it in their Google Drive. As a teacher, I can go into my student's Google Drive and I can see their work. As a student, I can now go back and use this document to help, let's say, study for a test. Before I had written descriptions of these samples, now if I want to really study for a rock and mineral test, I can see uh, what conglomerate, for example, really does look like, what the sample that I took a picture of as a student. So, let's tap out of this. Again, I'm going to tap the X right here and close out the Rock and Mineral Scavenger Hunt, and that puts me back in Blackboard. And now we're going to move on to the next section. We can actually look at a PDF document and open that up and explain everything, another app. So I'm going to tap on the second page of this module and now I'm looking at explain everything this is that program that you've seen before and used before where students actually have an interactive whiteboard they can record their activity they can write on the screen they can talk they can add videos they can save it as a video file and upload it to YouTube and, and much much more explain everything is a very powerful tool so we're going to take a look at how maybe we'll take a different activity, again a science activity. We're going to take open up this science lab, lab safety activity in Explain Everything. So I'm going to tap on Science Lab Activity. And again, it opened it, but it's not opened up in Explain Everything. I tap anywhere on the screen, and the words open up appear in the upper right hand corner for a little while. I'll tap again and now I'm going to tap on Open In. And this time I'm going to find Explain Everything, and there it is. Tap on Explain Everything, and now this document is loading up and opening in Explain Everything. This is a four-page document on lab safety. Students used to, in the old days, take this document. They would learn about lab safety from presentations and so on. They would fill in the answers, a little bit on lab first aid. I'm 
scrolling through this. Actually, what I'm going to do is tap on slide four or the slide arrow here and move to slide two. And here there were some questions on lab safety. I'm going to tap the arrow again. Here we have a picture of the laboratory nightmare. And this is where the power of explain everything comes in. Now a student can take a look at this and actually tell the story. So by doing that, so the student is going to tap on the red record button down here. I'll do that now. Now I'm recording what I'm doing. So I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to tap the pencil tool. And I'm looking here and, oh my goodness, this is not a good thing. Here we have a student who's actually drinking maybe water, maybe not water, because water looks just like acid. Acid looks just like water. So this reminds me of a little story of Little Willie. Little Willie was a chemist. Little Willie is no more. For what he thought was H2O, water, was H2SO4. So a big rule in chemistry is, in a science lab, is never eat or drink anything. Here we have Junior here taking direct sunlight into his microscope. Not a good thing, because direct sunlight magnified into his eyes will, well, it'll make him go blind. Here we have somebody, the boy here, is actually doing just fine. He's washing up, he's wearing his lab apron, he's keeping a nice clean lab. The girl, on the other hand, doesn't realize that her hair is about to be torched in, with the Bunsen burner flame as she's swinging around trying to get his attention. The boy, on the other hand, doesn't ha seem to have eyes for her at all. In fact, he doesn't seem to have eyes at all, but that's another story. Here we have some more not-so-great things going on here. Mouth pipetting, jamming a glass tube into a rubber stopper, and so on. Um, not sure where the teacher is in this lab. I'm thinking maybe it's him right here. So you can see that a student now can take this picture. If I tap off of the pencil tool and back onto the arrow tool, I can move the picture around, or I can just use two fingers. Let's go back and tap on this top button here, and now I can move the picture around and see what's on the rest of this picture. Okay, I'm not going to continue the story, so I'm going to hit pause here. And now I've got a two-minute video recorded. I can tap the play button. Now I'm recording what I'm doing. So I'm going to take a look at this. And it's playing back the video. My voice is a little quiet on here. I'd have to turn up the volume. But you can see that my voice is recorded. And as a student, I can tell the story right on this PDF document using Explain Everything. I'm going to stop this recording. And now if I look at my buttons down here, I can tap on this one. And you can see I can expect, export this to my Google Drive. I can export it to, as a PDF document, an iBook, a photo to my camera roll. Or because I made a video, I'm going to tap on this one here. And you can see now I have the option of sending it to YouTube. So now the student can send their video of their explanation to their YouTube channel and share it with their teacher in that way. So explain everything gives a student the option. You could start with a blank screen and explain a math problem, for example. Write it out. Explain. student could explain their work. Or in this case, they can actually open a PDF document and work with that like we did here. So this is how we work with, students work with explain everything when they're opening a PDF document. Down in the tutorial section later on in this workshop, you'll see how to add that PDF document so that it can be opened and explain everything. Now I'll tap on my home button and I'm going to tap on Safari to get back to our Blackboard course. I'm going to tap this X to close out that document and now you can see next page is opening a Google document so I'm going to tap on open a Google document we have some things that 
work and don't work when you're building in Blackboard. So in the tutorial section, it'll explain what to do and, and really what to avoid doing to make sure you have success with this. So I'm going to go back to that rock and mineral scavenger hunt, but this time it was created as a Google document rather than a PDF document. I'm the teacher, so I have it housed in my Google Drive, and I'm going to be linking to that. So I tap on rock and mineral scavenger hunt, and I can see now that looks a little funny. Maybe I want to view this in desktop view, in which case I would tap over here and I could select use desktop view. And I guess I have to continue to desktop version. And now it's opening that Google Doc the way I expected Google Doc to view. Now I have the options of, of adding comments and using all the powerful features of a Google Doc. So if I don't want my students to annotate something, I, but I do want them to have the powerful features of Google Documents, the commenting and so on, I would put it in my Blackboard course as a Google Document. If, however, I want them to do the annotating, I would put it in as a PDF so they could open it in Notability or explain everything and do their annotating. By the way, I always get this yellow message up here, and I've found that I simply dismiss it and ignore that message, and I have no problems viewing and working with the Google Doc. Okay, we're going to close the Google Doc out by tapping the X, and we'll be back in Blackboard. As you go through this, you're going to want to um, Take a look at some of the, the written directions here. Things we just talked about, tapping here to use the desktop version. It's all illustrated right here in the Blackboard course. So now we're going to take a look at Google Presentations. So I'm going to tap on Google Presentation. That's been added to this Blackboard course. And again, when you get into the tutorial section, you'll see the steps, step-by-step -step instructions on how to add a Google presentation to your Blackboard course. So here I'm going to tap on Rock and Mineral Presentation. I guess we sort of have a Rock and Mineral theme here. So I tap on that and it loads up the Google presentation and now I have a sample presentation that I can view through. I'm going to tap on the X and close that out. But you'll notice when I went through that presentation it was really more of a slide-by-slide -slide. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say it was it was picture by picture it wasn't really truly a presentation because it was not embedded in the document. Here we've taken this Google presentation now and embedded it so that from within Blackboard I can tap on the arrows and actually view it like I would expect a Google presentation to view where I can jump to various slides and so on. So in the tutorial section it explains how to simply link to a Google presentation or to have the full presentation experience by embedding the presentation right in the Blackboard course and it's viewed very nicely on the iPad. And now we'll take a look at opening other presentations like a PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to tap on open PowerPoint. And really the most powerful tool for presentations that students are going to have available to them is going to be Keynote. Keynote will be on every student iPad. It is Apple's answer to creating very nice presentations on the iPad. And it also has a real added bonus that most of your PowerPoint presentations will play if they're opened in Keynote. And they'll play quite well if you use some real powerful features of PowerPoint, you may find some things don't work, but many, many PowerPoint presentations seem to run quite well in Keynote. 
as you know, as you know, students currently cannot create Google presentations on an iPad. They can view them, as we just saw, but you can't create them. So Keynote is the answer for that. All right, now we're going to take a look at the Fossil Lab presentation. It was a, it is a PowerPoint presentation that was placed on Blackboard in this link right here. And later in the tutorial section, you'll see how to place that in here. I'm going to tap on that now, Fossil Lab presentation. And it's a rather large file, so it takes a minute to load. The Fossil Lab presentation is actually an interactive lab that was created with PowerPoint for students to work through at their own pace. You notice that when I touch the screen, the open in appears again in the upper right corner. So I tap on open in in the upper right corner and I'm, this time I'm going to select Keynote. If you don't have Keynote on your iPad, it'll be coming soon. So it's importing the lab. It's actually downloading this presentation to my iPad so that once I've downloaded it at school, I don't need an internet connection again to work with it because it's on my iPad. And again, it's a rather large file, so it is taking a little while to import the file to my iPad. But once I've downloaded one time, the next time I want to go work on this file, it'll open up immediately because it'll already be downloaded to this iPad. And it's telling me that I may have some issues running it exactly like the PowerPoint was done. For example, it might have a different font. But I'm going to click on Done, and we'll see how it looks. And there it is, the Fossil Lab. So I'm going to tap on the Fossil Lab and open it up. And just like in PowerPoint, I'm seeing my slides, I'm seeing my work area. I want it to play this, to run it, so I'm going to tap on the little arrow in the upper right-hand corner, and I'm going to run this lab. So here we have the Fossil Lab. Instructions for the students are to tap anywhere on this screen, tap on their favorite fossil, and it shows the index to the lab. If I, let's just say we'll start at Station 4, so I'm going to tap on Station 4, and in the old days, students would walk around the lab. They would see these fossil specimens in the lab, maybe look at them with a magnifying glass, and answer some questions. Now, they can still have that experience of looking at the actual fossil samples if they're in the classroom, because in the classroom, they have access to the actual samples they can look at. So let's say I want to uh, take a closer look. I'm going to tap on this picture to enlarge it because that's the way I made the PowerPoint presentation. I added a screen with a larger version of the picture and linked to it. Now we're going to tap on the identification chart. So I put a little symbol there. And now the student can look and using the identification chart, they can identify this fossil specimen. Going back to Station 4, we'll tap on the dinosaur there, and now we're back to Station 4, and we can work on answering the next question. It's asking us where, at what time period did the fossil live? So if I click on the little time scale chart, and we can get our information from there. If I tap here, and we can enlarge that. I'll tap on back, and now I'm going to go back to Station 4. And from here, I'm going to go on to the next station. So this was created in PowerPoint. It could also be created in Keynote. And it's being played on an iPad. Actually, you could actually create something like this in a Google presentation, and students could run it on the iPad as well. So this is a, a way to use the features of a presentation to make an interactive lab for students. In this video, you can't see in the upper right-hand corner, but on your iPad, you will see the word done. So you can tap on that, and now uh, that closes out the presentation mode. If I tap my home button, 
and then tap Safari, I can get back into Blackboard, close out the Fossil Lab by clicking on the X, and now I'm back into the Blackboard course, and we can move on and take a look at Google Forms in Blackboard. Okay, now we'll move on, and we'll take a look at opening Google Forms in Blackboard. So I'm going to tap on that. I'm pinching my screen down so that it's the right size. That's how I'm zooming in, by just simply taking two fingers and pinching out and pinching back in with two fingers. And here we have a, excuse me, an embedded Google Form, and it's being used as a formative assessment. This might be something you would put at the very beginning of a lesson so that you can get an idea of what students' prior knowledge is and students can get the same idea too for themselves. And that's really the important part is for students to be self-evaluating so that they can make judgments as to where in your course they need to go, at what level should they start working. So these Google Forms are viewed quite nicely on an iPad and they can be either linked or embedded. So, so we'll take a look at one that is linked first. So I'm going to tap on Rock and Mineral Formative Assessment right now, and we're going to see it, an assessment that has been linked from my Google Drive, from the teacher's Google Drive. And students can begin taking a look at samples what is, is this a rock or a mineral? I think it's a mineral. So I'm going to tap on mineral. I'm going to use one finger to scroll and notice how you can put very nice images into a Google form. This rock is metamorphic. Which of these rocks form from limestone subjected to intense heat and pressure? and so on. So we have pictures of three different rock, four different rocks. We can answer the question. Let's say um, intense heat and pressure, one is that one for sure. Uh, let's just say, let's say rock A. And we'll hit submit. Actually, I know I got that last question wrong, and that's going to be shown for the teacher and for the student. Um, if you get into Google Forms and scripting, you can actually have a, a quiz or a formative assessment that grades itself and gives the student an immediate response as to how well they did. That's a topic for a Google class, so we'll skip that for the moment. We're going to tap on the X in the upper corner, close the assessment out, and now we're going to take a look at an embedded assessment, the same assessment, but now it's simply embedded, and you can see if I tap on the answer to the first question, is this a rock or a mineral? It is a mineral, so I'll tap on mineral, and as an embedded form, it's working the same way as a linked form, but it's working right within Blackboard. So in the tutorial section, you'll see how you can both link and embed Google Forms and in, into Blackboard so that they work just like this on an iPad. Now we'll take a look at Book Creator and iBook Author Files. I'll tap on Book Creator. I'm going to tap right here. There we go. With Book Creator, an app that's on every iPad, students can write and publish digital stories, and they can add their recorded voice, music, and so on. You can add images from the web. There's all sorts of things that students can do using Book Creator. Then they can export their work to their Google Drive or even publish it to iTunes. Teachers then can create multimedia books using iBook Author on their MacBook and also 
link these documents or embed these documents for their students to open on their iPads and view. We have a link to an iBook that was created in Book Creator on an iPad. Currently, in order to view iBooks on your iPad, you need to be in the Safari browser. So if you're using the Chrome browser, you're going to want to switch out of that. And you're going to want your students to switch out of that so that you can open it up in Safari and actually open it up in iBooks. So I'm going to tap on Rock and Minerals here right now. And I'm going to open in iBooks. And so now this book opens up directly in my iBooks. This is a, a very simple iBook. I haven't added multimedia or anything. It's just a quick demonstration. But as I swipe across the pages, it goes from page to page. And now students can view iBooks created in either iBook Author or Book Creator right on their iPad, and it can be linked right in the Blackboard course. And back in the tutorial section, once again, you'll see exactly how to link these in Blackboard. I'll tap on, I'll tap on the Home button. I'll tap on Safari. And I'm going to tap on the X here to go back to the Blackboard course, closing that out. Now I'll take a quick look at Smart Notebook files. Your Smart Notebook files will run on an iPad, but not necessarily everything will run. For example, if you have Flash content, that's not going to work on the iPad. And there is a lot of Flash content available when you're creating Smart Notebook. So you may have to adapt some of your current Smart Notebook files so that they are going to run and work properly on an iPad. We've actually taken a Smart Notebook file and we've added it in two different ways. The first way here is to actually upload it to Blackboard using the paperclip tool in the content editor. And the other way is to link it from Google Drive. So let's take a look at the first one first, Rocks, uh, a, a quick little smart notebook file that's been uploaded to Blackboard. So I'm going to tap on Rocks here. And when it pops up, I'm going to want to open it in Smart Notebook. So I'm going to tap Open in Notebook. And now Smart Notebook app opens up. And these are all the things that I've downloaded to the Smart Notebook app. And it's currently loading this rocks file. I've, not I've noticed that sometimes it gets hung up in the loading process. And rather than wait for it, I just simply hit the home button go back to my browser and try opening it in a notebook again. And sometimes that just jump starts it and it loads faster. And there it is. And so now my Smart Notebook file is here. And just like in Smart Notebook, I can work through by clicking on the arrows, still loading, clicking on the arrows and working through the notebook file. So I'm tapping on the forward arrow and because this is Smart Notebook, I do have the ability to move objects around and manipulate the notebook file. So now students actually have their little Smart Notebook or their Smart Board right in their hand in the form of an iPad. We'll tap through a few more screens, but we won't take too much time if you want to work on this a little more yourself you can look through and get some ideas. So we'll tap on Smart Notebook Content. And these are all of the notebook files that are currently saved on this iPad. So a student saves their notebook files. For example, here's another one on addition. I'm going to tap on this one. This was downloaded earlier, so it's going to load up much faster. Student could work on this at home without an internet connection if they download it at school. Smart Notebook has a nice feature called the Activity Builder. It's not Flash, 
but it acts a little bit like some of the flash content because now I can take the little fish. I'm looking for anything that adds up to four. So I'm going to take the blue fish and I'm going to drag it into the bucket and it disappears because it added to four. I'm going to take this one that does not add to four. I'm going to put it in the bucket and it spits it back out. I'm going to tap on the little reset button up here. Looks like a puzzle piece and tap on reset activity and it's going to set the activity back up. So using the activity builder you can create some interactive smart notebook files for your students to use and to interact with and much in the same way that you've been doing it all along on your own smart board but now each student has a smart board right in their hands. Okay, I'll tap on the home button back into Safari I'm going to close out the Smart Notebook file by tapping the X. And now we'll take a quick look at a Smart Notebook file, that the same notebook file that's been linked from Google Drive. So I'm going to tap on Rocks right now. And you'll just notice that things work a little bit differently. I'm going to tap on the Download button. I'm going to open a notebook. And I can go back to the smart notebook content. I can find the new rack. I think it would be this one here, number 12. I've done this demonstration a few times, so it's downloading the same things over again. I tap on Rocks. This is the one that was downloaded or actually linked from Google Drive. And here it is, and you'll notice the experience is very similar. Tapping through the different screens and manipulating content. So I'll tap on the home button, back to Safari, and this time I'm going to close these documents out. And we're back to our Blackboard course. So you can try yourself if you want to upload the actual file, the Smart Notebook file, to Blackboard or simply link it from Google Drive. Um, take a look at, at how things are similar, how things are different for you. So we'll move on and take a look at YouTube videos. I'll tap on YouTube right now. And many of you are familiar with YouTube video. In the tutorial section, it'll explain exactly how to link YouTube videos. We have several options. We can simply have a link. I'll tap on the link right now. And it will open it in the YouTube app on your iPad. and that video will play through. Hello, I'm going to hit the home Rock button. I don't have to watch the whole video. Go back to Blackboard and now we can take a look at an embedded thumbnail version of a video. If you don't want it to take up a lot of space, you just put a thumbnail. I tap on the thumbnail and it's going to open up that video in the player. Tap on play, and the video starts to play. The video is in YouTube. It's a good idea to put these videos in your YouTube channel. And that way, you always have access to find the videos that you've been using throughout the course. All right, I'm going to tap the X and close out. And now finally we have an embedded YouTube video. And the embedded video looks like this. And it takes up more space in your course, but it has a, a, the added advantage of just simply tapping directly on the play button, which I'll do now. And the video plays right in the same window in Blackboard. And again, in the tutorial section, 
I'm going to pause that. In the tutorial section of this Blackboard course, in this workshop, you can see exactly how to do this with YouTube videos. And finally, we're going to take a look, take a look at opening web links. So I'll tap on Open Web Links now. And here we see a few different links to websites. So within Blackboard, you have few different ways that you can link things but here I prefer the method of simply typing out the words creating a link to a website and here I actually added a few little pictures because we're working with kids and well I like pictures too so we'll take a look at tapping on a link the learning zone for minerals so I'm going to tap on that link right now and it's taking me out to that website where our students can work with um, non-flash content on their iPads. I'll close this out, tapping the X, and I'll try the learning zone for rocks. And I'll tap on that now. I can take students, it's actually the same website, but I'm taking them to the exact place on that website that I want them to go. In the tutorial section, it explains exactly how to link a specific web page or part of a web page within Blackboard for students so that they can manipulate things on their iPads. Just remembering again that not all content works on an iPad as we know. Flash content, content that uses Java, uh, many, many, many web developers are converting to HTML5 and that HTML5 content works wonderfully on an iPad. So the iPad is going to be more and more powerful a tool as time goes on. I'm going to close out this link by tapping the X. I'm back in Blackboard now. And this, this concludes our demonstration. It would be good for you, and I'm going to use the breadcrumbs and go back one screen here. It would be a good idea for you to go through this demonstration on your iPad so that you can experience exactly how students are going to experience your content. And then, and then we'll be moving on to the next section here, taking a look at a few sample lessons. In these sample lessons, you'll see how you can assemble a lesson for students with formative assessments, with content, and then a variety of content and then perhaps a summative assessment at the end so you have a complete package of a lesson. Promise that the rest of the videos in this workshop will be much shorter than this one was.